Hi and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to talk about Tailwind CSS columns. So, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. To get started, we are going to generate our simple HTML5 boilerplate and I'm going to insert the Tailwind CSS CDN. Let's provide a title for our web page and let's save it. Next up, let's add some simple styles to the body. It's going to be a background color and a height of 100 VH. For the content, I am going to generate an article element and I'm going to provide a div within it. The div is going to contain a title and a paragraph. I am going to create a class attribute for the div element and there I'm going to provide a very light background color which is going to be slate and then the borders are going to be rounded. We are going to have a margin for bottom which is going to be 16 pixels, a padding on the left and right which is going to be 32 pixels and padding for top and bottom again 16 pixels. Let's provide a shadow as well and let's save our changes. Next up, let's grab the H2 element and apply some styles on that. Let's enlarge the text, provide a little bit boldness to the text and the text is going to have a, uh, a color of purple 500 and I'm going to provide a margin for the text which is going to be 8 pixels. Since we're talking about columns, we need to have a lot, a lot of content. So let's go ahead and let's create the div number two. The styles are going to be the same, but the title is going to be different. And the amount of text or content that we have in the paragraph is going to be almost different for all of the divs or, or all of the posts. This is number two. Let's go number three. Let's save the changes. And there we go. We have 15 blog posts. Let's go back up to our article element and in here I am going to create a class attribute. Here is the class attribute. Now the way columns work in Tailwind CSS is we either define the number of columns or we define the width for a column. Now here is where I would determine how many columns that I want. For example, I want eight columns and if I save it, we can see we have eight columns. It's not that readable. If I change this to four and save the changes, we can see our columns are expanding in a width wise. Let's change that to two. Let's save the changes. And now we just have two columns. And if I change that to one and save it, it's basically the normal flow of the document. The way we can specify column widths for our columns is very simple. We're just going to get rid of the number. And instead of that, we are going to provide a width. This is for Excel, which is going to equate to 896 pixels of width for every individual columns. The benefit of providing column widths for uh, columns is that the columns are going to be very flexible at every screen size. So if I save the changes and if I come here, we can only have since the largest screen size for me is around 1600 or 1700. We can have two column widths. If I try to zoom out, we are going to grab, we are going to end up with three columns. Let's make this number smaller. So I'm going to go to Excel, which is going to be equal to 672. And as soon as I save the changes, we can see we have four columns now. Let's go ahead and let's change that number again. And I'm going to go with Excel. In this scenario, Excel is 576 pixels. We have three columns because I returned the zoom level to normal. If I try to zoom out again, we can see we end up with more and more columns. So depending on the screen size, the column width is going to make sure we always have a very flexible number of columns. Let's change that value to LG, which is going to be 512. Save the changes. We still have three columns, extra small, which is going to be 320. And with 320, we can see we end up with five columns and we can see the result here as well. So if I try to decrease the width of the window, the columns, the number of the columns shifts. This is how we can end up with a very responsive, flexible layout for our columns. The last thing that I would like to talk about in this video is that if you take a look at some of the blog posts, we can see that they're not breaking properly. Now, this is where we are going to talk about another feature of columns in Tailwind CSS, and that is we are going to add another utility class to all of the blog posts, and that's going to make sure that the that the blog posts do not break in this 
unexpected way. This is how you can work with Tailwind CSS if you want to add multiple classes at the same time. So you're going to use the VS Code's multi-cursor feature. So how does multi-cursor actually help us if you want to add one class to several items? So we need to select a part of that item or element that is um, shared across all of the elements. So that's going to be this shadow MD. So I'm going to select that. That has been selected for the first item. I'm going to do control D or command D 14 times to select the remainder of the 14 posts. Let's do that. And there we go. So all of the shadows are selected, meaning all of the divs are selected. This class can only be applied on the blog posts directly, not on the parent of the blog posts, which is the article element. So I'm going to hit space. And if I can't, if I take a look at here, we can see these yellow lines, they indicate our multi cursor. And if you count them, they're going to be exactly 15. Now here, the class that I'm going to use is going to be break inside a void column right there and as soon as i save the changes and if i come here we can see now all the blog posts they break evenly and they do not bleed to the next column that is it for this video see you in the next one